and welcome back on my channel. Thank you so much for joining me again for another weekly reading vlog. Uh, this week I am not traveling. I just have my normal kind of work week and I am feeling a lot better. If you've been watching my past vlogs, I've been a little bit sick, but now I am all better. I have a full schedule for this week. So my reading plan for this week is 1,948 pages, which is a lot. I know. It is realistic, but really challenging. So chances are that I might come in under. I might come in under by one book, but it's a challenge that I can do. So I'll, I like to have challenging TBRs to strive and try and reach this goal. And if I miss it by a little, that's fine. I like them to be so challenging that it's really hard. Yeah, so what's my plan for this week? I will start with Memoirs of a Geisha. I am really looking forward to this one. I have been dying to read this in forever and I finally put it on my list for this month. I really want to enjoy this. So what I'm planning to do until the end of November is read around 20 pages a day. So bit by bit by bit. And I want to start with the first 20 pages today. And then I want to dive into The Wicked Saints today. I do have a buyer for this book. If you've been on my channel a little bit, you know that I don't tend to keep the books once I've read them. And I like to resell them, especially the ones with a signature, etc., to somebody who really appreciates and wants to keep them. So sometimes I push a book forward because I have a buyer for it. Yeah, I wanted to read this. Later this week, I do want to get into Girls of Paper and Fire. I wanted to read this last year, November, and this is one of my leftover TBRs. So. So I have a shelf on Goodreads that has my monthly TBR and when it gets to the month, I check what I had on my TBR last year and see what I haven't read and I automatically put that on or unhaul it. Girls of Paper and Fire is one of those that I wanted to read last year. I still haven't read it. And then on the weekend, I want to read a Poison Study and Magic Study. Magic Study is a traveling book that is part of a Goodreads group where we have traveling books and a lot of people, um, I think a maximum of 10 people usually read a book, put their notes in it and then send it on to the next one. So you can read all the notes from all the people who read it previous to you. The magic study is on its way to my house and I only have a month to read it. So I will do that this weekend and I haven't read the first one yet. So I do have to read Poison Study first. That's the plan for this week. I know it's super ambitious. If I have to scrap one book, it's probably gonna be Girls of Paper and Fire for this week and I'll, I'll push it out to next week. Um, so yeah, that's my plan. Um, other than that, I'm just back after a week of holiday. So today I have to commit a lot to just organizing stuff at work to understand where I'm at and what I have to do and plan out my to-dos for the rest of the year. And in the evening, I have an appointment with my son. Quite excited to see. So let's start diving into the geisha. Really excited to, to, to start this. And I'll see you in a bit. I cannot believe how much I am liking this. So I am 27 pages in. I read the first two chapters. And this is... This writing style is so much fun. It's so easy to get into it. It's so, I don't know how to, how to describe it, but it's really, really easy to get into it, to follow the story. I am instantly drawn in and I just could continue on. And I could even like, this could be a book that I would want to read in one sitting and I would sacrifice my sleep and health for it that's what I'm estimating right now because it's so it just flows right now I like the writing style it's not a super lyrical writing style but I'm not a person who is reading books for like this super lyrical writing style I just want a writing style that gets me into the story 
and that I don't even notice um, that helps me completely immerse into the story and not notice that I'm reading. So I need a simple but eloquent enough writing style. And this is exactly what it's delivering. So it's neither making me step out of the story because it's super lyrical and super beautiful and it's not let, letting me step out because it's chunky or weird or something. So it's just perfect. I love it. Uh, I still will put it to the side because I want to savor it and I will start with the Wicked Saints next. But first I will do a couple of hours of work and then during my lunch break I'm trying to read like maybe 30 pages or so. <sighs> Good morning. I think I slept 14 hours last night. It's That's just not okay. I don't know why, I don't know how, but 14 hours are gone. Um, I was way too late to a phone conference um, at work, so yeah, major, major flop there. But I'm awake now, I am done with the conference call, I need to make myself a cup of coffee um, and a cup of tea, um, and then I'm freezing. I don't know why I'm that cold it's it's not even that cold in like the temperature um says it's 21 degrees celsius um so this is like normal good living temperature but i'm freezing my ass off i need to find some um big warm con comfy socks some warm drinks and then back to work Today is such a last minute everything day. Um, I've try I'm, I'm trying to get my shit together for work. For some reason, it doesn't seem to be working that well. I don't know. Looks like I'm rather losing my shit right now. I feel so incompetent today. I don't know what's going on. And, and this is not like a usual, this is not like a common thing for me. Um, just right now, it I feel weirdly incompetent, so I have to get back on track here. Um, because this cannot go on like this. Um, I also have to, I also have to get to my um, weekly class in my gym. I need to get to it, and I already pushed it back by an hour because I couldn't get away from work and now um, in five minutes it starts so good on that um, all the streets are busy shit <laughs> you know when you're like really in a rush everything's just doesn't seem to go right so now I'm just waiting here at a traffic light and I'm actually having my I'm actually having my lunch at like 5 p.m. Um, because I haven't been eating shit today. I have not had breakfast. I pretty much just had one cup of coffee and one cup of tea today. That's it. And then I just heated up some um, broccoli mash with some potatoes and some meatballs. Um, and I started eating it in the car because if I go completely on an empty stomach the gym is gonna be a disaster but I can't miss this so it's starting in four minutes I'm there in one minute so it still gives me time to get into the right shoes and that's it Ugh. Um, I mean, throughout all this, you're already guessing that I obviously haven't read anything today yet. But I'm hoping to close out a few things at work in like an hour after I get back to work from the gym. <clears throat> and since I slept for, what, like 14 hours? I should be, 
I should be good. I should be able to concentrate on what needs to be done for work. Uh, for work. I should be able to concentrate on the book. So yeah. Now find a parking spot and get inside. Okay, off to the gym. See you in a bit. Uh, what a day, really. So I am. Um, I've been back from my workout. I worked for another two hours, and now I'm just putting away some stuff. Um, I just wanted to show you. I'm actually using this for my receipts from like expenses and stuff. Um, and when it's full, I'm sending it in. Um, so yeah, this is my <laughs> little expenses box. And I just love how it looks in my, in my shelf. It's just so much better than, um, than other stuff. So like, this is like my box for the to-dos. And come on, doesn't that look way more awesome? This is how it's going to be in my shelf now and I think it just looks awesome and I just want to get this subscription box for getting more of these boxes because it's just so awesome um, all right so now that that's done um, I will take half an hour and just read a few pages in um, memoirs of a geisha I actually have it right next to me on my um, on my desk and then after that I will actually make some dinner and for that I'm probably gonna make um, the second recipe from last week's book box that I received from um, Adi from the traveling uh, book project Germany um, where I got a lot of gifts so if you um are interested in like the most awesome book box you should definitely check out my last week's vlog because oh, awesome yeah maybe maybe an hour of editing and of reading and then i'll see what needs to be done still okay that's my tuesday for you so i just read one chapter and i already met my daily quota in this book um, as i mentioned i want to spread this out through the throughout the month and I am enjoying it so much it's so drawing me in I just want to keep reading and I don't want to keep reading to savor it at the same time I don't know how to explain it but I am enjoying it a lot it's really good um, from a writing style perspective I can feel with her and everything let's get some food ready and then sit down with Wicked Saints which I am excited to continue I hope that I'm getting into the book right now, that I can really, um, really get into it. I think the prompt saying that it has like twisted characters, dark characters, that you might not know who's evil or not, um, that they're all bordering on evil possibly, and that it's dark and gruesome. And I think I've read in one review somebody saying, if you like happiness in books, this is not for you. So. I'm so enticed by this and I, I want to be invested in this and I want to love it. So I'm hoping that it's gonna draw me in tonight and that um, yesterday was just a one-off because I had like, my, my thoughts were moving and um, it was my concentration level maybe, hopefully. So let's get some food and then read Wicked Saints. what to do I'm considering DNFing it for now um, I'm saying for now because even though I am having a really hard time getting into the story I know that this is the type of book that I should love everything that I've read about this just feels right to me I like villains I like evil characters and I like them when they're not just evil when there's like layers and when like and anti-heroes and um the greedy the gruesome and all this kind of stuff I'm not into horror I'm just into like conflicted and mean characters and characters that make decisions for a certain reason that are seen as evil. This all should be what our three main characters in this book embody 
And my biggest problem is not that I'm bored by the story or something. My biggest problem is that I have a hard time focusing on what's happening. I have this situation where I'm reading a page and then I'm like, Huh? What did I just read? I completely forgot. I'm spacing out. And I know it's not that I'm in like a complete reading slump because when I'm reading the memoirs of a geisha, it's completely fine. I am completely in the story and it's all good. I'm not sure if it makes sense to hold on to this right now. I feel like I should be reading it again at a much later stage. My biggest problem with DNFing things or picking them up later is I'm now 150 pages in. I feel like I've put some effort and some time into this. So DNFing it feels like a relief if it's not a book that I consider good. But since this is not a book that I don't consider good, I'm really struggling with this because I don't want to just leave it at 150 pages, put it to the side until I feel more like it and probably wait for half a year. I don't want to do that because I want to feel that relief of being done. And also I um, and also I do have a person who wants to buy this book, so I want to get rid of it and I want to finish this now. On the other hand, I don't feel like I'm doing this justice and I'm not enjoying myself right now. And those are very, very strong reasons to stop reading a book. Don't want to say that I gave up on it. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to think about it overnight, but I'm considering DNFing it because I don't feel like I'm doing it justice. I think I would love it, but just right now I don't. And maybe I can pick it up in a few months when I can reread the first 150 pages and it doesn't feel like it's work. You know, when now I was just thinking, oh, should I just go back 100 pages and see if that gets me into the story? And then it becomes work when you're rereading and rereading and stuff. So when I'm at a point where I would have forgotten everything anyways, I can start rereading without it feeling like work. I feel so bad, but I think I, uh, it's a high chance that I'm going to be DNFing this tomorrow and starting into the next book. Maybe I'm going to do something like a first chapter in the next book and see if that's any better and if it's it is this is going to be dnf yes i think that's what i'm going to do so i'm going to do a chapter into the next book on my plan and if that is any better i can get into the story much better than it's the book it's not me it's just th not the right time for us another time another space we would have been best friends probably i'll do that tomorrow Oh my gosh, I forgot to do my vocabulary training for today. So um, yeah, I do need to stop reading now and do my vocabulary because 10 new words a day so I could actually make some learning progress and I have to do that today and then I'm gonna go to bed. Good night. Morning, it is 9 a.m. on a Wednesday morning. Just made myself a cup of Owl Crate coffee. <laughs> so the Owl Crate at one point had a coffee in their box, and today was the day when I decided to open it because um, I was not in the mood for my normal coffee. Cheers to that. I have to start working in like half an hour, so I decided to read one more chapter before work. And then later I'll try a chapter in my next book on the schedule, uh, Girls of Paper and Fire. I will read a chapter later on and see how I'm going on and then decide if I want to DNF. The Wicked Saints. So it is quite interesting how the memoirs of a geisha really captures me, intrigues me. I don't know how to word it correctly, but I am instantly drawn into the story and I follow her and it's so interesting. So yeah, I'm just astonished how this story keeps drawing me back. I have done a couple of hours work now and I'm actually quite efficient today. So I feel a lot better today than yesterday. Yesterday I was a hot mess about work. I was not satisfied with what I'm, I was doing with my delivery and everything. So today is a lot better and maybe that puts me into a better reading mood as well. So I will, I just have, it's 2.30 and I um, have half an hour of a break. Um, so I'm gonna make some fish. Shocking. Um, for anybody who knows me, I do not like anything that comes from the sea. Um, I don't really like fish, but I want to teach myself to like fish. I know it works because I've done that before. Something that I didn't like was wine, but I wanted 
myself to be a wine drinking person. <laughs> so I taught myself to like wine and now I like wine with pretty much like, I, I literally like wine. So it's not just like I do it, but actually I don't know. I like wine now. I love the taste. And I want to do the same with fish because fish would be so beneficial to my health right now. And so I'm trying to teach myself to like fish. Judge me all you want. Let's just be. All right, so I'm gonna make some fish real quick. Um, and I'll have that and I'll read the first chapter of <laughs> Guilds and Paper and Fire. And I will see after the first chapter if I'm drawn in as much as I am into uh, Memoirs of a Geisha. And if I want to continue reading this or Wicked Saints. And then based on that, I'm gonna make the decision if I'm gonna DNF Wicked Saints for now or not. What is uh, Girls of Paper and Fire about? I have no clue. I read the synopsis when I got it. That's a year ago. I just know that I was excited about it. And my feeling says something Asian influenced. My, what I can tell what it's about is that we're in a um, fantastical world where there's different castes and that each year there's um, beautiful girls chosen to um, serve the king as paper girls which is the lowest and it's the um, highest honor but it's very demeaning at the same time but this year there's an additional one um, but instead of um, out of paper she's made of fire um, I'm not sure what exactly that means but um, she has golden eyes and she's being ripped from her home to serve the king and then she wants to flee but when she flees she falls in love so potentially this can go very very right because um, of the whole caste system and it, this could be about a revolution about some magic about some struggles of like position and hierarchy and i love this kind of stuff this could go very wrong for me because it could go very very heavy on the romance part which is not the right thing for me so forbidden romance um and meshed with an explosive plot that threatens the king's very reign so yeah forbidden romance and eh, threatening a king's reign yeah so let's see where that lands uh, but let's get first something into my belly trying to get some food in before my next phone conference and the mail is here every few days i feel like this is what's happening in my mailbox <laughs> so i'm opening right now the willoughby then i have a book um i'm assuming this is the magic study uh, which is the traveling book project then i'm gonna unbox that one later on camera and we have a palette all right so <clears throat> what do we do first so this one is probably the most unexciting one because this should be pretty clear what it is and there we go the magic study now gets uh, straight onto my tbr um, there's not a lot of comments in here. Yeah, there's a few, not a lot. I love when there's a lot, but it's fine. Then we have the Willow Bee. Last time they did really well, um, but it was more of an open-ended thing where I just gave them my Goodreads favorite shelves and my Goodreads um, TBR to tell them these are the books that I already own, so I wouldn't get any like doubles. Um, now I give them a very specific prompt that I want books with sassy, snarky characters, um, similar to uh, Spike from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, or something that is influenced by Asian cultures. Um, far, I'm not sure about the books that I received. This is the third one. Um, I'm reading one later this month hopefully let's see what the third book is i'm actually not sure if i subscribe to three or four books three so i get this card saying this is my last delivery from the willoughby book club with a little quote the lies of Loch lamora i don't know how i feel about this because i already own this book and i thought i gave them my goodreads to say what books i already own but I'm not sure if I really did this time. Um, I haven't read it yet, so I can confirm if it has a sassy, snarky character. But I think from what I've heard, um, 
it might actually completely fulfill the prompt. So I am um, putting that on my December TBR to see if it does. And I might actually give away my extra copy. Who knows? And now to what I've been waiting for, quite exact excited to put this into my collection. Yes, I am a makeup collector. I'm a part-time semi-professional um, makeup artist and I'm selling. So not really makeup artist, more like a, like it's more about the, like the natural looks, like what you would do for people who go on like a talk show or something. I do makeup coachings and these kind of things. Um, I do sell makeup, but I also collect makeup from different kinds of brands. And of course the, um, palette that was breaking uh, that is breaking all the records needs to be part of it I'm quite sad that I'm not getting any like fancy wrapping like everybody else seems to get this feels so cool I mean I know why it feels this way but it's so weird and different to feel that way there it is I cannot believe I am holding one in my hand after this ordering ordeal I really do like the quality of this compared to like all the other palettes that I own. This quali quality is really cool. Also, these are like, it just feels legit to have this kind of quality, you know? And there she is. Is this especially exciting? I think I have most of the colors somewhere. People who are saying this, these colors are all unique. I don't think that's true, but some of them are not as common the combination is really cool i think the payoff is really amazing wow look at this so the pigmentation is really good i mean putting my fingers in just doesn't say anything to be honest the quality of these shadows is amazing and i do love these colors i love the packaging my only downside is that this is a collectible item this is not a usable item for me because as cool as this palette is just to throw it into my into my bag and go and run and have it in my a makeup kit it's taking up too much space i love it but as a makeup artist or as a person traveling i cannot use this so it's a collective item but not very usable i'll use it to, um, at home all right let's get back to work so i guess i spent my break opening packages what else is new in my life <clears throat> so i didn't even finish my break i didn't finish the uh, the chapter and now it is 9 30 i just got drawn back into work and things just happened at work that's just how it is and after work i um, instantly had a quick call with my friend and my parents and now it's 9 30 and i just ate this piece of fish today i'm starving so i have to find something something non-carby that still can satisfy this hunger and then hopefully i get to read for like another hour to actually get into um, girls of paper and fire and make the decision if i want to dnf wicked saints or not morning it is thursday already i did end up reading the one chapter in bed last night and i am getting into it more than the wicked saints but not as much as the uh, Memoirs of a Geisha. So continue with the Girls of Paper and Fire and put the Wicked Saints to the side for now and just see. Maybe I'm just gonna have to um, not savor the Memoirs of a Geisha and just read it through. Maybe I'm so invested in that story. It's so easy for me to be drawn into that story that this is keeping me from being into, into this fantasy world right now. I don't know what it is, but um, that might be an option too. I will read another chapter in Memoirs of a Geisha, as is on my schedule, <laughs> and then I will go and work for a while. And maybe then during lunchtime I can read for half an hour in Girls of Paper and Fire. Oh, by the way, it's Thursday and I still haven't edited um, last week's vlog and tonight I have my Korean class and then tomorrow I have my other Korean class and then on Saturday I have my third Korean class. I have three classes this week 
that's a little crazy, but it does make sense uh, when you've heard um, last week's vlog. So I am now ended up with three Korean classes a week. This will limit my reading time, this will, will limit my editing time. Um, so I do have to find a way to put some editing time in and I might have to cut a book or two uh, from my TBR to get some editing time. And this is something that I just have to consider going forward. If I want to vlog, if I want to edit, I need to include that into my schedule, into my like reading commitment time schedule. Well, that was super quick. So I think I got the information that it was sent like one or two days ago. Three days ago they shipped this from South Korea. And it's already here. So what we have in here are books from Talk To Me In Korean. Um, I do have level one grammar the level one grammar and the level one workbook but i wanted a few additional books to help my progress one is the korean guide the korean verbs guide i will start using these after like probably beginning of the new year real life conversations and mainly what i was looking for is reading books um so i can start reading really simple stories in Korean. Although this is still a little bit much for me, I think this is great to start. And I just need to practice reading because I'm still reading like a first grader who just learned the alphabet, which I did. And then the last book that I really wanted is the 500 first words. I just love how this is structured and I committed to uh, learning 10 words a day and this kind of reflects that as well. As soon as I don't have additional words from school, which is only like maybe 10 words a week, I want to go through this. So that's my Korean learning book hauls. I am now on my way to the Korean class and I am hoping to read a little on the train. Um, honestly, it's gotten so cold. This is not weather for me. I'm wrapped up a little. Let's see if we find some time on the train to uh, do some reading. We should, and then I should have a really good inkling on Girls of Paper and Fire. I'm thinking about what book I could delete from my TBR to make some room for editing time because that's obviously needed. So it's almost nine o'clock. I'm gonna be home in like five minutes. So um, yeah, then I will have to finish something for work. I guess I'll work for another hour, probably. And once I'm done with that, I want to sit down with Ghost of Paper and Fire. Um, did only read two like pages uh, on the train. The train ride is only like 15 minutes, so I can't really get to reading. But I did my vocabulary training on the train. So I'm done with that for the day and I'm hoping in a couple of weeks I'm going to be caught up and then it's going to be better. So now getting home, reading time, possibly reading time in my bed. I might really fancy that tonight. It's cold and it's November cold and I'm loving staying in my bed at that point. So I think I'm going to do that. So Friday, I'm back at the train station again, I'm going to my uh, second Korean class of the week. Um, work has been crazy busy, so pretty much what happened, I was working so late that I just fell asleep last night and got up and back to work. So pretty much nothing in between, not even 
a little bit of memories of Gisha in between so now I have an hour long train ride so at least I'm gonna have some more time. Also der hat schon gefragt, so, soll ich warten mit dem Essen, weil ich halt nicht sicher war, ob wir essen oder wir erstmal was essen. Komm, jetzt mach ich mal dich. Genau so. Sie hat wohnungsbedürftig. Also als Eis zumindest. Schatz, du darfst mal schon Pulver zu Hause. Also von daher, das überlasse ich dir gerne. Es geht eher so ein bisschen mehr Geschichte als dieses typische K-Drama. Wow, guys, now I am tired. Um, and I look like shit too. I mean, honestly, the eyeshadow holds amazingly. Um, I put this on like, what, eight hours ago? I obviously was out with dinner um, with a couple of the other pupils in the school and um, it got a little bit later. I came home, finished up some work. Um, I just read two chapters in Girls of Paper and Fire, but I'm getting quite invested. It is a, so far a very traditional story, very, uh, just the common girl gets taken to, to a court, doesn't want to get there and tries to run away kind of story. I'm still getting quite, quite invested. So I'm going to continue reading that. I haven't been reading, what is this? Um, I have not been continuing Memoirs of a Geisha today. I am way, way, way too tired to read. I am just gonna um, watch an episode of something. And then tomorrow my third green class of the week. <laughs> Good morning! It is Saturday and my reading this week has really gone boom. But um, I've been having a busy week at work and I have been having a great week with um, people learning Korean and meeting them and just doing some stuff out of the house. So I'm okay with it. But I do want to pick it up a little because I do want to uh, get through a couple of books and I just had gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna have to find the, a good balance. And right now the balance is leaning a little bit more towards meeting people um, for like Korean classes and work. So I'm gonna need to shift that. I am now really quickly getting ready. So I will throw on some easy makeup. I have to leave in like 20 minutes for my third Korean class of the week. <laughs> and I will listen to Memoirs of a Geisha while I'm doing that. Also, um, it just arrived the, um, a boutique box and I'm excited to open this one up. So because I only have 20 minutes, let's go throw on some makeup so I am presentable. <laughs> There's only one question in my mind, so this book is about um, this area where we have different castes. We have the lowest caste, the paper caste, and then we have like the highest caste, the skin caste from like they like demon bloods, and then in between is like a half demon, half human um, caste. And every year the king um, picks eight girls to pretty much be there, his concubine for a year, and. Well, 
in like the closer villages to um, the king, this is like a really great honor and everything. But obviously not everybody feels like that because you're pretty much taken from your home and brought into the palace and you're a concubine for a year. And then our main character is taken as a knight because she has these wonderful eyes that look like they're golden and that isn't human really but she is fully human so it's special. So she's being introduced as the knight's paper girl. So we're following her story and um, she arrived at the palace and everything. So far so good. No, I, I think so far this shouldn't be any spoilers because that's pretty much what's on the back of the book. But um, yeah, so she's in the uh, in the palace and she is being taken to her room in this like wing etc. And there's a room for her. Which I feel odd because if this has been a tradition to always have nine paper girls for hundreds of years, uh, always have eight paper girls for hundreds of years and never ever have nine or never ever have a different number than eight, then why would you have more than eight rooms? Next weekend I will be going to a meetup with some um, fellow readers that I know from Goodreads from the Traveling Book Project. So I need to cut some out. Hey, so I am back home and I have some mail to open. So the first one, I just wanted to show this to you. This is a flower subscription box. Uh, yeah, I do like have my YouTube name for a reason. I get everything in the subscription box here. I stopped getting food. Um, because of my specific diet, but before that I was getting like all the Marley spoons and Hello Fresh, etc. So this is a flower subscription box and this is my favorite because the way they're packaged is really nice. And the flowers are sleeping. Beautiful, beautiful. What is under here? So some greenery. And I love these. Um, these are called something like a cat's paw in German. These and these and some white roses. So I'll arrange them in my vase later on. They're pretty. More importantly, the boutique box. So I think I might be canceling it because um, I have too many um, Korean beauty boxes and I'm getting too much stuff again. So I'm at a point where it might be time to cancel. Um, so this month's theme is lights out. Uh, what the boutique box is that there is this flyer and it explains stuff. I think this box costs me like 40 bucks or something. Interesting enough, these Korean um, boxes, I never have to pay shipping for them. So that's good. And let's look what's inside. Let's get the big one out first. It's the Urban City Carbonated Bubble Charcoal Clay Beer Mask. I love bubble masks. I love charcoal masks. And look at this fun, like it looks like a beer can. That's really, really cool. It smells exactly like the other bubble mask I have. Just like a can of beer, the clay mask carbonates and creates micro bubbles when massaged into your skin. This helps remove impurities from your pores and make your skin moisturized and smooth. I just love the product design. It's really cool. A bubble bubble lip mask. Enriched with white. So I'll put this on. Wait two to three minutes for bubbles to appear. Gently massage the bubbles in and around the lips. Wipe off with a damp cloth. Use this before applying any lipsticks or lip makeup for soft and moist. Lip mask will reduce wrinkles and dead skin cells on lips and leave it smooth and supple. That is so cool. I have never had a bubble lip mask and I am just, woohoo. This is so cool. So this is apparently 12 bucks. Um, then next, um, this might be a lipstick, Kiss Intention lipstick. Um, this is 
10 bucks and it's either number seven or number nine and I have number seven. Looks like I have more like an, of an orange tone and number eight would have been more of a like reddish cherry tone. I wish I would have gotten the reddish cherry tone because orange is not my color. Uh, colorful bright lips are just one coat away with this lipstick. The texture of the lipstick is very smooth and soft and will provide moisture while keeping the color on all day. Uh, whether you're going to work or going to a party, this is the perfect lip product for a beautiful and effortless look. By the way, I still don't feel any bubbles. So it was not as bubbly as I thought it would be, but okay. So a nice, simple packaging. Um, it has like this matte look. That's nice. Oh yeah, this is not my color. Oh my gosh, that is color payoff. This is really bright orange. Let me just turn you into the light. Look at how bright orange that is. I do not think I have an opportunity to wear that kind of orange. This just does not suit me, oh my gosh. Do I have a use of this in my lip kit, uh, in my makeup kit? I don't think so. But uh, We have a blush, which is a much better color for me. Uh, then we have a, a black peeling pad. Ooh, I like this. It's like a pad that you can use as a peeling. Face and body jewels, not really something that I would be using much, but maybe I'm gonna have a use for it. So, all in all, I have to say, um, this is an average box for me. Money-wise, this is good. So from like a um, sheer value, getting these six products is okay. We have like, full-size product it's not like um the other like the beauty boxes in germany they're all like um test sizes and these are all full size value is there but overall what i'm actually going to be using is this mask probably the lip mask and um the pad this is not really worth it and there's nothing in here where i'm like oh yeah i wanted that and that's so hard to get for me so a little underwhelming so let's go and um, get the flowers arranged sunday morning end of the week for me i only slept a couple of hours but honestly I was lying in bed for like two hours now cuddling up being like in between sleep not having to get up kind of thing which is by the way the best fucking thing ever when you can like, just cuddle up in your um, sheets and know that you don't have to get up and oh, I love it so much so but after like two hours and not sleeping I'm like okay Okay, I guess it's time to get up, even though I did not get my, like, eight, nine hours sleep. So I got up, made myself some porridge, which I'm going to eat now. Have a quick uh, vitamin drink. And I think I will read another chapter of Memoirs of a Geisha. Or no, actually, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I will continue with a chapter in Girls of Paper and Fire. And then I will go to the gym for an hour or two. And there I will be listening to Memoirs of a Geisha. So I will be a little bit ahead of schedule with Memoirs of a Geisha. I did cut a couple of books from my TBR last night um, so that it is a little bit more comfortable. I'm around a hundred and um, um, I think 170 pages that I need to do per day, which should be doable with the plans that I have in the next couple of weeks. Should allow me a little bit time for editing. Yeah, so a lot more comfortable. I should finish Guild of Paper and Fire today. And that's my goal for the day. 300 pages should be doable on a Sunday. <laughs> I 
have been reading quite a bit. I'm on page 165. And I have to say, reading paper, <laughs> Girls of Paper and Fire, at the same time as I am reading Memoirs of a Geisha is kind of weird. Um, because there are a lot of parallels between the two books. And I feel like um, a little bit too much of some parallels. Um, so I keep confusing, well, not really confusing them, but I keep getting out of the book in my mind and I'm like, uh, hey, that sounds like Memoirs of a Geisha. Um, it's not exactly the same, but it feels like a lot of the major plot line um, so far has been having some similarities. So not the same similarities. Um, now we're getting to a kind of turning point and I'm hoping to see how this is being handled. I don't really think it's a turning point per se, but for me it is going to be a critical point to see how she handles writing this part. So I'm excited to see what that's going to be like. And yeah, but I'm probably not going to be finishing this tonight. I'm a little bit hungry. And for some reason, I am reading this really, really slowly. I did read like close to 100 pages in Memoirs of a Geisha tonight, but this takes so long. I don't know why. Um, so yeah, I will be pushing this into tomorrow as well. I want to finish this tonight. I want to be on schedule for once, but no. And surprise, surprise, I didn't do any editing either. All right, let's at least get to like page 200.